Hallelujah. I want to welcome you once again to another episode of God's Word. I can assure you one thing, this is loaded with blessings. If you believe, you are going to be blessed. But if you receive it casually, you are not going to be blessed. I can tell you that. So, the, the success, or no, not the success is not the right word. The assurance of being blessed is totally dependent upon your faith. Faith is a currency by which you can appropriate God's blessings. Faith is a fire that triggers a dynamite or explodes the dynamite of God's word. God's word, the, the, the logos is dynamite. But that logos becomes a rima, explosive, dynamis power is released when you touch the word of God with your faith. Just like the woman of the issue of blood touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. Touch the, <laughs> the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. Touched Jesus in faith. The power. God says, I perceive power flowing out from me. Power flowed out from Jesus to heal her. Today I want to tell you, touch Jesus in faith. Touch Jesus. Touch the word of God. Receive the word of God. Believe the word of God. And then you'll be blessed. That is what is confirmed. Like I told you earlier, the topic that we are reading about is the a coin. You can call it a coin. Coin has two sides. One side is the covenant of God. Luke 1 4 says that you might know the certainty of the things that you are instructed in. The other side of the coin is the blessings if you believe. Blessed is she believed, for there will be fulfillment of all the things spoken to her by the Lord. Amen. So let's go into some word. Hallelujah. You need to understand the mind of God. It's so important. You know. You must have the mind of Christ in humility. You must understand the mind of God. It could be compared in a way to the uh, Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, the prodigal son. The prodigal son went away from the father's house. He was still a son, but he had no fellowship with the father. He was in a pigsty. And I ultimately, he so bothered him. <laughs> Good sense, sound mind came into him. And he said, this is not my place. <laughs> I'm not supposed to spend eternity here. And this pigsty and die. I'm supposed to go back to my father's house because there he is a rich, abundant, you know, abundantly rich and merciful God. A father. He loves me. He has not rejected. He will never reject me because he, he loves me because he's my father. Are you with me? And he knew that he might be downgraded. He may be. Or rather he, he would have been happy even if we were downgraded from the status of a son to that of a servant. So he confessed his sins. Are you with me? He repented and confessed his sins. That is why John 1, 1 John 1 9 says, If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He confessed his sins in this pigsty. He says, I am going to my father. I am going to tell him, Father, forgive me. I have sinned against heaven and before you. Forgive me. So that confession was there. God heard his confession. Though there was no priest to sit before and a confessional to hear him. My dear brother, you don't need a priest to forgive you of your sins. He has no right or authority to forgive. The only person who can forgive your sin is the person who has paid the price for the sin. The price for your sin, forgiveness is paid by Jesus Christ and him alone. He is the only one who can forgive your sins. So don't sit, so don't go and kneel before a priest and confess your sins. You are only sharing a joke with him, a, a, a sin with him over which he might even get some sexual pleasure or some other pleasure. There are so many instances of priests cross-examining the, the, the believer who came there about the, the, the nature of the sin, how it was done, what was done to get some sort of sadistic pleasure or, or sexual pleasure out of that. There are instances. I am not just trying to say things which did not happen. Hallelujah. This happened even to me once. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you, you should confess your sins to Jesus who has paid the price for your sins. Then, the prodigal son confessed. Hallelujah. Father, Jesus forgave him. And, I dare say, send his Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Just like Philip, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was transported to the carriage of the eunuch. Are you with me? Ethiopian eunuch. Similarly, I believe 
Because this person, this prodigal son had gone far away. He had gone far away to a far country. So there is no way that a person who has not had enough food also could walk and come. He was transferred. He had no money to pay for his passage. The Holy Spirit of the living God would have taken him and put him at the gate of the father's house. And then you know what happened. The father did not even wait to hear his confession in full. He immediately restored him to sonship. Gave him a new garment, gave him a new sandals, gave him a ring, everything. He was restored. He was restored to the original position. That is the confidence that he had. If the son was not confident that the father would receive him, he would never go back. Because if he were not, he would probably have been waiting there with a gun to shoot him. Or in those days, I don't know whether there were guns, maybe with a bow and arrow or a sword, drawn sword to kill him. No, he knew his father's heart. Today, my dear brother, when you approach the, God, words, the word of God, you must know the heart of God. The heart of God is to bless you. Even if you are a sinner, God says, I did not come to seek and save the righteous. I have come to seek and save the sinner. He wants everybody to be saved. He knows our human frailty, weaknesses. That is why God says in the Garden of Gethsemane, the, the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. So pray. Pray that you don't fall into sin. God wants you to lead a righteous life. That is why he took your sin and gave his righteousness at the cross at Calvary. 2 Corinthians 5 21 says, He who knew no sin was made sin for us, that we might become his righteousness and his life. Hallelujah. So you must know the mind of Christ. Okay, let's get into the mind of Christ. That is, if you believe, it will happen to you. The book of Matthew, chapter 8, verse 2. It's very interesting. You need to understand. You had to put yourself in that. Then let us uh, read from one onwards. When he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So he was expressing his faith. <laughs> are you with me? Are you a leper. You can understand. Leper was ostracized from society. He or she was not supposed to even mingle with people. And I don't know, they say that he was supposed to carry a bell that he would ring when he see people to warn them that I am a leper, don't come near me. Are you with me? So he had so much faith in Jesus. He must have heard people saying, look, Jesus of Nazareth came there. There was someone who was blind, he healed them. Someone who was deaf, he healed them. So he, it was only hearing. Book of Romans chapter 10 says, verse 17, faith comes by hearing. Hearing of the word of God. Are you with me? So he must have heard, he or she must have heard about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that he is God, he is a healer, he is a mighty man of God. And he says very clearly, and behold a leper came and worshipped him saying, Lord if you are willing you can make me clean. How did Jesus respond to that? Are you with me? How Jesus responds to your faith? Though? This is what you need to understand. Verse 3 says, Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him and saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Amen. 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 You must be so excited, my dear brother. When you confess your faith, Lord, you can do it. You can do it. God will come into that situation and he will do it. He is willing. He is willing to bless you. He is willing to heal you. He is willing to deliver you. He is willing to restore you, my dear brother, my sister. All that you need is confession. That I cannot do anything, but you can do, Lord. You can do everything in my life. Hallelujah. Like Jeshaphat said, we do not know what to do, but our eyes are unto you. Because you can do. Second Corinthians chapter 20. You can do it. You can give us victory. Today, every problem that you are having, my dear brother, my sister, confess to the Lord. Lord, I cannot do it, but you can do it. If you are willing, you can do it. And the Lord will say, I am willing. I am willing. Amen. Take another example. In the same book of Matthew chapter 9, verses 28 and 29. I'll read it out to you. Hallelujah. I think let's start from, uh, uh, from verse 27 onwards. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Again, blind men, they would not have read the scriptures. They would have heard. Are you with me? They would have heard from people saying, Jesus of Nazareth is a son of God. Hallelujah. Son of David, according to the lineage. He knew the scripture there. He must have 
I mean, if this uh, blind man was able to understand the scripture that Jesus was born out of the lineage of David, then he must be have read a lot of scriptures. He must be quite familiar with the scriptures. And when he heard Jesus is of Nazareth is here, he knew immediately this is the Messiah promised by God, and he is the lineage of David. Of his kingdom there will be no end. Amen. So they cried out, Hallelujah. Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind man came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, you are able to heal us. Give us our sight back. And then Jesus touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus, okay, and their eyes were opened. So today, when you read the word of God, my dear brother, in a way, God is asking you, do you believe that I can do this? I can come into your situation and I can deliver you. Do you believe I can restore you? Do you think I can come into whatever be the situation, however hopeless it is, I can give you victory. Do you believe? The question is asking is, whenever you read word of God, you need to understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. You might be having a red sea before you. And when you read that, you should... God is asking you, look, I parted the Red Sea. Do you believe that I can part your Red Sea? Or I broke down the walls of Jericho. Do you believe that I can break down the walls of your Jerichos? Or that you are thirsty, there is no water, you are starving. Do you believe that I can give you manna? I can give you water from the rock? Each, each thing that you read is for our instruction. Like if you heard, here, heard earlier, 2nd uh, uh, Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, 17 that all scriptures spirit breathed is given for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction. So whenever you read God's word, you must understand that it is alive and active, it is real today. And if I am going through that situation, God can come into just like he did it there. He parted the Red Sea. He can part my Red Seas. Are you with me? Today. So God is telling, ah, do you believe that I am able to do this? So my dear brother, my dear, so all that you need to respond is, yes, Lord, you can. I cannot, but you can. I cannot, but you can. And then God will tell you, let it happen to you according to your belief. My dear brother, my dear sister, I want to urge you, I want to tell you, your blessing is in your hand. Every blessing. God has, Jesus has paid the price for your blessing today by his death, a substitutionary death, sacrificial death at the cross of Calvary. 2023 years back. It is all there. All that you need is to be appropriated in faith. He does not have to be crucified all over again. He is not hanging on the cross. But he is now sitting in the right hand of the throne of God. As the king of kings and the lord of lords. It is he is the one who is interceding for us. That is why the book of Hebrews chapter 7 verse 25 says. Hallelujah. He is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. For he always lives to make intercession for them. He is the one who can come into your situation and save you. All that you need is faith. Amen. Bless. Blessing, blessing, blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 1 1 says, Blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. What do you understand from that? If I am blessed if I do not walk according to the counsel of the ungodly. Then, if I walk in the counsel of the godly, then I am blessed. Are you with me? Walketh not is the same as walks. Are you with me? So you can read it this way. Blessed is a man who walks in the counsel of the godly. Not ungodly. Walketh not ungodly. Walks godly. Are you with me? Godly counsel. Where do you get it? instruction from God's word where you are instructed so if you walk according to God's word you are blessed because you need to understand that the word of God is a blessing hallelujah the word of God is a real blessing and whatever you see other than that the healing the deliverance and all that is a fruit of the word of God we know the word of God says in the book of Matthew sorry John chapter 1 verse 14 the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us and we beheld the glory of the word. So when you believe in God's word, it releases a blessing into our lives. And it says, nor stands in the path of sinners. That you do not, standing in the path of sinners is actually, you know, uh, communing with them. 
and having discussion. You know, very clearly that in the gates, when God says, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against my church, the gates is a place where the people gather together to take decisions. They stand together and take decisions. So it does not stand in the path of sinners. So you are not associated with sinners. You have nothing to do with the ungodly people. And then it says, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. A scornful person is, is scorning everything. He is having totally rejected God's word, the finished work at the cross at Calvary. And do not sit or make yourself warm. Hallelujah. Like Peter, he warmed himself at the fire. Hallelujah. Which was built for the people who are going to kill Jesus. Are you with me? So don't sit with the scornful. Don't follow him from a distance. But be close to him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that is set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. So you need to understand one thing, that we have to be totally committed to Jesus. The word of God must be living manna, because God says very clearly, Hallelujah, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Mouth of the Father. Amen. So today you need to understand we have to prioritize our life. There will be so many options that are available for us in this world. But the prioritization is the most important thing. Like David who experienced the blessings of God. The grace of God in abundance. A shepherd boy becoming the king of Israel. It is unimaginable. And more than that, God gave the grace upon his life. That Jesus even testified that the son of Jesse, David, is a man whose heart is unto mine. His heart was beating in tandem with that of God. Amen. What a blessing. Hallelujah. He had his own faults. You read Psalm 51. He committed adultery, he murdered, he did a lot of things, but still he repented and God restored him back. The joy of his salvation was restored back. And so, hallelujah, you need to understand that when you give your life to Jesus, hallelujah, that's the greatest blessing that you can possess. A relationship with Jesus. That relationship is, you need to understand, hallelujah, in the book of John chapter um, 17 verse 3 says, eternal life is to know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he sent. Hallelujah. Believing. Believing is so important in our lives. Hallelujah. I want to take you to another word of God in the book of John chapter 20 verse 29. This is after Jesus was resurrected from the dead and he came and met his disciples. Then it says, Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You need to understand that. Uh, Thomas said, unless I see, you know, put my hand in his uh, chest and in his hand and all that, I will not believe. He was very stubborn. And then Jesus is making a remark that you have believed because you have seen. But blessed are they who have not seen but yet opted to believe. They have the trusting faith to believe. That is why when you read the word in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, it says, Now faith is a substance of the things hoped for and the evidence of the things not seen. So you did not wait for putting your hand into the, into the side of Jesus or into the hand of Jesus to find out and admit that he is God. He is the Savior. No. You believe that he is the Savior. So he says, that is a faith. So not seeing and touching is not faith. That does not require any faith because it is, it is a fact. But the truth of which the word of God is having faith in God's word. Having faith in the truth that is the word of God. As he says, now faith is a substance of the things hoped for. So it is tangible and there is a hope which will not disappoint you. That is faith. And the evidence of the things not seen. Evidence is substantial evidence. That is there is something that is unchanging. But I have not seen it. But it is there. That sure, assuredness is there. That is faith. Hallelujah. Now, let's come to... So, you need to understand, we are so blessed. Jesus is calling you what? Blessed. Because if you believe in Jesus, you are blessed. I dare say, more blessed than even Thomas. Hallelujah. Because Thomas wanted to see Jesus and touch him. He said, other than that, I won't believe. But you and I have experienced Jesus. You may not have touched him personally. In faith, yes. But not physical touch. Hallelujah. So we are blessed. Hallelujah. That is why the word of God says about John the Baptist, 
a woman born, there is no one who is greater than John the Baptist. But God says, but whoso is in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Are you with me? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I want to take you to one word in the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. And the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 is so beautiful. It is about the commission that God gives Jeremiah the prophet. He is called a weeping prophet. A prophet who was living in the time of, you know, is totally heartbroken seeing the relationship, the way, the wayward way that the people of God have gone. He's a weeping prophet. And God tells him something in the book of John, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and 12. He says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, when I read the word of God, I read it instead of Jeremiah, I read it as Joe's. I think because the word of God is a message for you. It is not history. It is my story. Are you with me? When you read the word of God, it should not be a historical uh, sort of representation of what happened. Definitely it has happened. But you must read it as alive and active for you today. So I always read it as Joe's. Instead of Jeremiah, I say Joe's. Hallelujah. Anyway, I'll read the word as it is now for... Otherwise people think he is misquoting the word of God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. Hallelujah. Jeremiah saw the branch of an almond tree. Hallelujah. What does it signify? In the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Let's read that. The book of Galatians chapter 3. Verse 14 and 13 talks about a great blessing for each one of us. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So the branch of an almond tree refers to the crucified Christ. Are you with me? Refers to the crucified Christ. He says, what do you see? I see a branch of an almond tree. And then the Lord says very clearly, Hallelujah, to me that you have seen well, I am ready to perform my word. So when you are able to see the crucified Christ, when you are able to see the finished work at the cross at Calvary, you are able, God is ready to perform his word. So you need to acknowledge the crucified Christ as your Lord and Master. As the word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who perish. Or do not believe. But to us who believe, it is the power of God. So God says, I am ready to perform my word. And again, I want to take you to another word in the book of Numbers. Chapter 17, verse 8. Again, Jesus Christ is, again, is when he was resurrected from the, from the, uh, from the tomb, he became, he was resurrected in all his glory and majesty. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Many were, who were buried probably in the surrounding tombs are still dead. They are not alive. They are not fruitful. But Jesus died. He was buried and he rose again according to scriptures on the third day. As a glorious king of kings. To come again once more. Hallelujah. All his majesty and glory to take you to be with him where he is. So the book of Numbers chapter 17 verse, verse 8 says. Now you, you must read that you know. The budding of Aaron, Aaron's rod. I can't read the whole thing. You read that from 17.1 onwards. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses went into the tabernacle of witness and behold the rod of Aaron of the house of Levi has sprouted and put forth buds, had produced blossoms and yielded ripe almonds. So just one day, a dead wood, a dead tree, not a dead tree, sorry, uh, just an unfruitful tree, put on leaves, Put on blossoms and yielded almonds. Today I want to tell you, it was kept in the ark. So if you are in the ark of the covenant, if you are in the presence of God, if God is in you, you will become fruitful. You, however dry the situation might be, God is able to, I mean humanly it is impossible for a, for a rod of the almond tree to be kept in a box and then next day it has blossomed. As the word says very clearly, it says, Hallelujah. And it has sprouted forth. That means there were leaves. Put forth buds. Which means there were small buds. The, the, the beginning of a fruit. Uh, the blossom. Produced blossoms. That is a, uh, the flowers. And yielded ripe almonds. So everything happened in one day. Just one day it happened. So you need to understand. That all the other rods. 
were unfruitful, barren, but the rod of Aaron was fruitful because the Aaron was having a relation. All the rods were kept in the ark, in the, ta in the, ark, in the ark of the covenant, but only Aaron's rod bore much fruit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to understand that Aaron's rod, among all the other rods, only Aaron's rod produced fr fruit. Hallelujah. Aaron's rod it can be referred to as the almond tree, the cross, cross at which Jesus Christ was crucified. So if you are united together with Jesus, then you will be fruitful in your life. And that fruitfulness is something which is mind-boggling. Hallelujah. The book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith that was in the Son of God or the faith of the Son of God who loved me so much that he gave himself for me. So you as a person gets transformed into a person in the likeness, in the image and likeness of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? A new creation. The faith of Jesus. The faith to move mountains. Because Jesus says in the book of Mark chapter 11 that if you say to this mountain and you believe what you say and it will happen according to what you say, it will be uprooted and will be gone to the sea, thrown into the sea. Are you with me, my dear brother? So it is faith that moves mountain. So you need mountain moving faith. Hallelujah. And that faith is possible only when you are in in, 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 in a relationship when you are crucified with Christ. That is the faith that you and I need. Hallelujah. Jesus had no, no doubt about going there to the tomb of Lazarus and telling Lazarus come forth. Or he had no doubt about uh, the, telling the storm be still. Are you with me? He exercised his faith or multiplying the bread and the fish. He was confident. He says ask him to sit. Hallelujah. So today you need to understand our life will be so blessed if you have the faith of Christ or the faith that was in Christ and that is possible only when you are crucified with Christ and then you should be able to say it is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me which means you are in Christ when you are in Christ you will be exercised, you'll be able to exercise all the authority that God has given you and you will be able to experience every blessing that is in the word of God let's close eyes Father we thank you for the words that you spoke to us yes Lord hallelujah give us the ability Lord to 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 say no to our everything, Lord, hallowed to our flesh, and to be crucified with Christ, Lord, so that you and we can personally experience the power of the presence of God in our lives. And we can believe, and every covenant promise in the word of God will become our inheritance. Father, we make this prayer in the most adorable and precious name of your beloved Son, and our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And God's precious people said, Amen.